Good morning. How's everybody doing this morning? Welcome to Oasis Church. I just want to start off sharing a scripture in Hebrews chapter 10. He says, Dear brothers and sisters, we can boldly enter heaven's most holy place because of the blood of Jesus. By his death, Jesus opened a new and life-giving way through the curtain into the most holy place. And since we have a great high priest who rules over God's house, let us go right into the presence of God with sincere hearts, fully trusting him. For our guilty conscience have been sprinkled with Christ's blood to make us clean and our bodies have been washed with pure water. Let us hold tightly without wavering to the hope we affirm for God can be trusted to keep his promise. Let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works and let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do but encourage one another especially now that the day of his return is drawing near. I want to encourage you this morning let's go right in to the presence of God. We don't need to wait for a favorite song. We don't need to wait until you know somebody says something. We have the right and the ability because of the sacrifice of Jesus to enter directly into the presence of God and let us think of ways to motivate one another to love and good works. The purpose of this gathering is not just to come in and feel good. One of one another version of the Bible says let us provoke one another to good works. When you leave here today, you should be provoked in your spirit to go and do and put into practice what you have heard, what you have seen, what you have witnessed here this morning. And so don't let this day pass by and just think, hey, it's another day where I can come and and feel good and get my Jesus fix. Let's learn something. Let's provoke each other to good works. Let's put into practice what we learn and what we hear this morning. Let's pray. God, thank you so much for your presence. Holy Spirit, my prayer is that you would come and take control of this service this morning. God, we want what you want. God, we may have our our plan and our agenda, but what you want is more important. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you would be in control. God, open our hearts, open our ears to hear what you have to say and help us be provoked to good works this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Through you, I can do anything. I can do all things. For it's you who gives me strength. Nothing is impossible. Through you, blind eyes are open. Strong codes are broken. I am living my faith. Strong souls are broken. Living by 
was, you know, at the forefront. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's that's life, right? You know, we have things happen. You got to just turn it around and choose to be happy. Um, I had a youth pastor, Bo Norman. I don't know if you guys know him or not, but he always said something to me because I wore my, my emotions on my sleeves. Everything upset me. Everything made me mad. You know, everything. My family knows that, you know. And he said, Tiff, you got to choose to be happy. Happiness is not an emotion. It's a choice. So this morning, I was definitely being tested in that area, you know, and that's, you got to re remember that though. It, it's in those moments that you're most frustrated or most upset or most offended that you say, you know what? No, I'm going to choose to be happy. I'm going to choose to be constant and I'm going to choose that to believe that things are going to look up and be better, you know, because that's what the Bible says, that all things work together for the good. So I just wanted to throw that in there. Okay, so um, next month, May, we have a Convoy of Hope. We're going to be serving. I know you guys have heard me mention a couple times, but um, so next Sunday, we're going to have sign-ups for that. Um, it, it's it's going to be really awesome. I really think that us partnering with them is going to be a big help to them and to us. You know, you, you learn a lot when you serve. And I don't think people who haven't served before or haven't been on a mission trip, you don't realize how much it defines you as a person until you're in that moment. And you're like, you know what? I'm making a difference. And it makes you feel good to be making a difference for people. So be looking out for that. Sign up's next Sunday. Um, also next Sunday um, is Baptism Sunday. So if there's anybody here that is interested in getting baptized, please come see me or message me this week so we can get that ready. Um, we don't get it ready unless we have signups um, because it's a process. So please come see me if you're wanting to get baptized. It's not a problem. We will get it ready because that's a, a monumental thing in your life. And if you haven't been baptized, I encourage you to pray about that and, and do that because it's important. Um, so that's next Sunday. And then we have marriage retreat um, next weekend. So we're really excited for that. I know you guys got your little invitations today. So, um, and, and you know, like I said, we're doing a lot of preparations for that. And, and I know we're not going to have a ton of people there, but we're going to have fun. You know, it says where two or three are gathered together, I will be there. So we're going to have more than two or three. So, so that's all we need, right? <laughs> awesome. All right. Well, we're going to do something this morning. Um, so Caitlin Drake is going to be leaving us to go and minister um, with her family. So we're going to bring her up today to release her. And Bryce and Daphne are going to be doing that for us. They've worked closely with her. And unfortunately, Pastor and Heather couldn't be here today. But they wanted to tell you that they love you and they appreciate you. And we're here for you no matter what. 
So if you need anything, you need counsel, you need support, you need friendship, we're here. So you're not leaving us. You may be leaving us physically, but in spirit, we are with you. And your family knows that, that we're with them too. So Daphne. Amen. Um, Caitlin, if you want to come up, Bryce is making his way out. <laughs> woo, 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 woo! We, um, Stacy is like, I don't want to do it because I'll cry. All right, so Caitlin has been such a great help to us. And I just want to say to you, I am so proud of you. You have come such a long way in your walk with Christ. And I, you minister to me and I am so thankful for you. And um, I know there's several people here that would agree with me, but we want to give this to you um, from us and the youth group. And so, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um. I mean, I can't really add too much more because she kind of said everything, but she is, she was such a blessing, um, not only just to us, but all the leaders in the youth, in the youth group, um, even past leaders um, that I've talked to that used to come here and, and minister to the youth here, um, have commented on how much of a help and a blessing that Caitlin was when they were here. Um, so we just want to send you off with all the blessing of Oasis Church and Pastor Stephen Heather, they send their blessing. They aren't able to be here today. Um, but we just want to pray over you, and we know you're going to do amazing things. If, if we could get some leaders to come up and, and help us pray. <laughs> yeah, and the youth. Come, come help us pray. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we praise you and we thank you, Lord God, for everything, Lord, that you've done through Caitlin. Lord, the blessing that she's been here to this church, Lord, to this youth group, to this ministry. Lord, us leaders, Lord, we couldn't have done what we've, what we've done so far without her, Lord God. We know that you have great plans ahead of her, Lord Jesus. Lord, we, we just send her with blessing, Lord. The anointing, Lord God, of your Holy Spirit would follow her, Lord. Go ahead of her, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you and we praise you, Lord God. You are worthy, Lord God, to be praised, Lord. This light that she carries, Lord. Lord, let it be a blessing to others, Lord Jesus. Where she's going, Lord God, I pray that you would open doors right now, God. Holy Spirit, go before her. Open doors that she didn't even know were going to be open when she got there, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy, God. We thank you for Caitlin, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, in Jesus' name, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. You are worthy. You are worthy.
and come up. We'll take our tithe and offering at this time and continue our worship. If you have a gift, bring to the Lord. Go ahead and do so at this time.
today are here and you feel like I need a miracle of some sort I need a I need a miracle or maybe the doctors have told you something that they're really having a hard time figuring out what's wrong or you've got things going on in your life maybe it's financial maybe you're struggling so much that you can barely make it and you're thinking I don't know how I'm gonna I'm not I don't know how I'm gonna survive this I don't know how I'm gonna to deal with this if you're going through something mentally maybe you're so upset you have some depression that wants to settle on you a little bit and you're saying I don't know that I can do this but you have to understand what God says he's there when you don't feel him he's still there when you're struggling to, to feel like you're hitting a brick wall he's there he will never leave you he will never forsake you never not one time so if that's you and you say I I just I need a miracle of some sort I need God to just give me a miracle raise your hand raise your hand across the building so I'm gonna ask you to do this when we sing this I know it's easy to get caught up when we're in worship and we're singing it's just easy to see the words and this is a fairly new song so it's easy to look up and just kind of get distracted just by words but if you're saying I need something I need God to come through for me let me tell you friend, he's going to I will tell you from my experience he's coming through for you whatever you need he's coming through for you whatever you need he's coming through for you whatever you need he's coming through for you I promise it may not be in your timing and trust me I know that's the most frustrating part as a human I just want it in my time but God says I see you and I hear you and I said it so you believe it I said it's done I went to the cross he sent his son to the cross to die a brutal death and resurrect again because we can have freedom we can have the things we need God says I will take care of you I will heal your bodies I will heal your minds 
So if that's you, I'm gonna encourage you, we're just gonna sing this a little bit more, but I want you just to really stop. And whether it means you gotta take a minute and just sit, and, or whether you gotta stand and say, God, I'm surrendering everything. Because when we raise our hands here, I know that sometimes it's a little confusing for some, but this is a sign of surrender. Right here, it says, God, I am nothing and I need you more than anything in the world. And it's not just a happy dance that we do, or it's not just a, oh, this is what we do when we come into worship, we raise our hands, how do I do this? It doesn't matter how you do it, whatever it means to you to surrender, do that. Whatever it means to you to surrender, do that. Say, God, I surrender everything to you. I'm letting go. My hands are open. That's another way to say, God, my hands are open to you. Whatever you need to take from me, take it. But whatever you want to give to me, give it. So, God, I pray for every person in this building. God, and even those who aren't here, but God, they need you so desperately. God, they're searching for a miracle, God. Whether it's financial, mental, physical, emotional, it doesn't matter because God, you are there to meet every single need. There's not one need that goes unlooked by you and looked over because God, you see every single one. So God, I pray for every person in this building, God, that needs you so desperately yes, today. Yes. God, I pray that you would come through financially, the ones who are needing a breakthrough in their finances, God, that you would provide, supernaturally provide, that they wouldn't be able to put their hand on it. They would say, this is only God. This is only God. God, the ones who are struggling physically, God, I pray right now that you would break chains off and God, that you would heal. And God, that it would be supernatural. There would be nothing else they can point to but you. God, mentally, those dealing with depression that wants to settle. In the name of Jesus, we pray right now that the cloud of depression breaks. In Jesus' name, anxiety breaks, depression breaks, Satan, you have no place here because we have the authority of Jesus Christ. So God, we speak right now over every person, over the minds, over the bodies, over everything, God, because you said we can believe. God, you gave a promise and we can stand on it. So God, we pray right now for every person in this building, God, I pray for breakthroughs after breakthrough after breakthrough. Jesus, we worship you. now there is a gentleman that is watching this live stream right now i got a friend that lives in alabama that he is in the hospital needing another kidney and looking for a donor he texted me this morning i messaged him said i was praying for him and he said you know he believes in prayer he's a he's a powerful man a pastor and but he said i'm still believing god has a plan and i'm telling you right now jacob i got a couple that's here right now this morning it's a testimony that i have a friend that was healed from cancer this week I'm talking about tumors left this week. Jacob, your healing is coming. God does have a plan. And I'm singing it. I'm, I'm declaring that right now over your body. Let's pray over him. Jacob Thomas, Lord, 
right now. Let him find what he needs. Let him find what he needs right now. And Lord, don't let, Lord, let his faith grow in you. God, not be diminished, but grow in you, knowing that you can do all things. Nothing is impossible for you, Jesus. You're working the plan. You're working things out right now. Lord, right now, build his faith right now. I believe at this moment, something is being released right now. God, you're doing something right now. Right now in his body, Lord. No dialysis for you, buddy. No more. No, you're not going there. You're going to find what you need right now. I pray healing over you right now in the name of Jesus. We believe in you, Lord. You're doing it, Lord. You can still heal. You can still do it, God. You can still do it. You still do these things, God. You said it, I believe it. You said it, it is done. You said it, I believe it. You said it, it is done. You said, Lord, you. You know, there's a story, the book of Acts, Acts 3, Peter and John's going into a temple, going to the temple through the gates called Beautiful. Does it start to resonate? But they met a man who was laying there, a lame man. He looked to him and he's a beggar. Scripture says in the fifth verse, it says, you know, they look at him, it's like, they look at him, they focus on him. How many of us have seen the beggar? How many of us have seen somebody, they're wanting something, and we're so apt to just, do we do everything but look at him? But they fix their eyes on him. And he's like, oh, I got their attention. But he's looking at them, and Scripture says, expecting to receive something. He looked at them expecting 
to receive something. It doesn't say what he was expecting. No, we, we can assume that he was expecting money. But he was expecting to receive something. How many really came expecting to receive something this morning? I mean, really. Or is this just a checklist? It's Sunday morning, it's rainy, we can't do anything else. But did you come expecting? Because that scripture goes on. And he got more than he was expecting. Because they, they said, we don't have a silver or goat. We don't have anything. But what we do have, we give you. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. Literally the last thing that he was expecting. But the thing about it is, he was expecting. And now here's the beauty of that. Jesus wants to give you more. More. Go ahead and sit down. It's fine. That was free. You know, it occurred to me, we've been locked in here for about a year. And I dare say that sort of some of you don't really know our heart, maybe. I grew up in church. No one certain church, not for a while really, because I'm so careful, but it's because I had a dad that I felt because of his worldly position, did everything that he could to buy his way. We go to one church and stay there for a while. Something had happened. They get church hurt. They move on to a different church. And I really hated that. For a long time, I, 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 I really hated that we never was locked in. Because there's something, I see different ones that's been, is, has been locked in. And there's something to be said about that growth that you, you get by doing that. But then it hit me one day. Because I grew up between full gospel, Nazarene, Baptist, Christian, but it gave me something. It gave me, I could care less where you go, but if we can agree on some things, if we can agree that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, if we can agree that because of the cross and what he did some 2,000 years ago, that he rose again, that he sent his Holy Spirit, that he set it at, seated at the right hand of the Father. And I know Scripture says that he's seated. But this is where I differ, folks. This is where I, I, I've got to believe. I've got to believe that he's seated, but he's sitting on the edge of his seat. Dad, can I go? Look around, people. Dad, can I go? So I grew up in church. The thing about it was, was while I appreciate that now, I didn't so much then. I didn't like the times that, oh, we have these things up here. They're called altars. I didn't like the times at Wednesday prayer meeting to come and, and we spend time. We got to go. We got to go. We got to go. Got things to do. I don't want to be here. So I didn't have Jesus. I really had religion, and I played that pretty good for a long while. I guess I played it so well I really captured the love of my life, which I was bound for one direction, and, and the devil uses so many other things to get you off your focus. So I took a long journey walking in two worlds, trying to. But then I also realized what church hurt was, and I also realized that, well, quite frankly, I said for years, 
Yeah, I'll go back to church when hell freezes over. And I was dead serious. Because I got my eyes on man. I got my eyes on people. I set people up as a God and not God. And it, did a, it, it didn't hurt them. It hurt me. Yeah, I'm wondering where this is going, Lord. But eventually, I told somebody, we, we got to talking the other night, I think it was at the garden. And it come to the point that I got put down in my, I was down almost six years ago. Yeah, 16. Mother's Day is when it really hit me down in my back and that the rest of that year I was pretty much down and out. Uh, three months of it I was down and then I got back up for three months and I got down again. But in the process, man, I've cut so much out of this, but that's all right. The process, my wife says, you know what, it's time that we get back in church. You can do what you want. So I was like, yeah, I'll tag along. I can hide. But when God's got a plan and he's got a call in your life, you just can't hide too well. We try. Oh, we try. The story wasn't pretty. We've got, uh, and I'll probably mess this one up. What have we got there? 42 years of marriage and quite honestly, 30, at least 35 of that, I put her through living hell. And I think I can say that up here. Because I was trying to serve two gods, one being the God of myself, and the other was, and even at that, not that whole time, because like I said, I stepped away. I could care less. I was done. I was done. Grew up in church, and I was like, I don't even know if there was a God. But how many knows that we can, might give up on him? But he never gives up on us. So that's just a little bit. That's just a, a skim of the surface of our life. But there come that point in time, and I'll put it to you this way, because my life's testimony is for another day. I walk, it wasn't until I walked out of some place I had no business being. And I was headed home. And I was like, God, I can't do this anymore. And I wish I could say that there was that audible voice. But there was something that was inside me that I, it was like, huh, finally. Maybe you're starting to get it. Because we can't do anything. From the very beginning, hmm, thank you, Lord, that worked. Okay. From the very beginning, we know in Genesis 2, it says that God formed man from the dust of the ground, and then he breathed his breath of life into man. God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. You know, he was made in the image of God, made for unity, made for relationship with God. We know from scriptures that says that, that man, that they, they walked in the cool of the evening. You know, I'm probably jumping ahead of myself, but, but it says that they knew, they, 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 this is after now, you go after the devil, Satan, had done his little tricks, and he, he comes to Eve and, and plants that seed of doubt in, in, in her mind as, did God really say that? But my point is that they, they had a relationship, and we know that they had a relationship because it says that they heard him walking in the cool of the evening. They heard him. To, to rec they recognized it because it had happened before. It, they recognized it because they had developed this relationship. They had a relationship, and then they had that. They had developed that. 
relationships doesn't don't exist overnight. You start having a bond. I think almost, my brother here, I think almost immediately there was a bond, but the relationship that we've got now is continuing to grow. And that's the same way with God. When he created us in his image, in his image. But because Satan come and plants this seed of doubt, did God really say these things? A seed of doubt, a lingering look, a hint of sensual desire, delight, a sensual delight, a spark of a desire. All these thoughts was going through Eve's mind because of what the devil had said. And so it began. The pursuit of more. The pursuit of more, uh, something that we continue even today, we continue to seek more of. Eve used to her downfall because of what the Satan had planted, and it was to be more like a God. To be more like a God was a thought that I think captured her heart. To know the good and evil. Those are the things I think that captured her heart. And really, as I said more, I dare ask, what is, was your thought? What was the first thought that went through your head? What is the more that ran through your mind, that raced through, that grasped onto? I mean, by nature, we want more. It's just natural. If we're going to walk this earth, we're going to want more. It's a natural act. But I dare say, what's the first thing that comes to mind? More fame? More fortune? Maybe it's more work. More wisdom? More fishing? More knowledge? More time? Maybe it's just more time off. Maybe it's more ministry. See, the more isn't always a bad thing. But what about just more time with Jesus? What about more for, for his kingdom? Because, see, we get wrapped up in the selfishness of, a, of the more. See, it becomes, it becomes a, a question, is it to be more like God? Or is it to be more like a God? I mean, it's a play on words. There again, like I said, my dad, <laughs> he was a used car salesman, and I swear he was, well, maybe I shouldn't swear. In my mind, he was probably the first original buy here, pay here later, but, the, and it's sad to say, the one thing he taught me, it's all on how you word things. He could sell ice to an Eskimo, I swear. But it's the way you word things. So listen to it. Do we pursue him to be like a God? Or do we pursue him because we want to be more like God? You know, I was, I was kind of putting this together, and it so came to me. And if, if you guys want to put it up, you can. because uh, You already have. <laughs> the more our lack in unity... Because like I say, it's, it's not wrong to want the more. It's really not. I mean, we think about it. Do we remember, do we remember the passion that burned when we first, when we first encountered Jesus Christ, when we first accepted him as our Savior? Do we remember the burn that burned within us? There was a burn, there was a passion that, that was consuming. What happened? You know, and there again, it's, it's part of our human nature, but it's so much like when we meet that special person, that, that one special person in our life, there's that desire, there's that hunger to, to spend as much possible time with that person as we possibly can. And then you think about this and you think about how it's so relationship with Jesus. 
you think about how we're the, supposed to be the bride of Christ. So we should, we can, most of us that are married, that have been in relation, are in relationships, can relate to that, 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 that passion. There's something that, that you, it, she just captivated me. She just captivated me. It's supposed to be the same with Jesus. But yet, it's not always that way, is it? Human nature is, is, is physical. And we have that God-given desire to have an intimate relationship of companionship. It's God-given. The Garden of Eden. We've already been, we've already started in the book of Genesis. We'll get to Revelations. Don't worry about it. We got But from the very beginning, God ordained marriage. He ordained that to have a relationship with him first and then to have that relationship, which is a human nature. Intimate, I'm, I'm big on looking up definitions. Intimate, very personal or private. Intimate thoughts marking, marked by very close association, suggesting closeness or warmth. You know, and I haven't, I worked for a lot of years to become hard. And I know my heart has become softer. But I know he's also doing a work because I think I've shed more tears this morning. Because much like you said to join in on this song, we had a song this morning at Gardens. <sighs> now that I can't even think, it was... Oh, how he loves us. Oh, how he loves us. And it just hit me, and I, I said, people, let's, I, I asked the, the, the group that was singing, and I said, let's redo that. Let's sing it again. And interject, oh, how he loves me, to make it personal. We don't make it personal. We want more. But we're also, we, we sometimes, just like I, I, I said, sometimes, I don't put myself out there enough because I'm trying to protect something because I don't want to be like that. I'm not that person. I try to protect it, but we don't put ourselves in the picture. Well, God can do it for them. God can do it for them. God can do it for me, whatever it is that I need. Because... Because man has a spirit. Man has a spirit. And there's also that desire to be spiritually intimate. See, we don't separate that intimacy. We, we, man perverts so much stuff, we just think of intimacy, we automatically go to sexual and, but the intimacy that God wants to have with us is that spirit on that spiritual side. It's, it's about the relationship, not the religion. We've got to escape that. So again, I, I ask, what do you really want more of? See, and, and this more has, it, it started because most of you know that I think that I, I work at the Water Gardens fill a certain position. And I, I started a couple of years ago really seeking God as when a, a new year starts to come, what, what's, what's the word? What's the focus you want me to have this year? Last, last year's was, was deeper. And this year's made no sense to me because as I, I sought God, it's, I just felt more, more. But there's so much more that we're missing we're missing so much more of him. He has given it all, and he doesn't hold anything back, but we have to pursue him and what it is. And, and it's even I, I, the scripture, and most of us know the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew 5, what is it, 5, 6, and 7, but verse 5 in chapter 5 says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. That sounds, to be hungry and thirsty, 
I want more. If I'm hungry and thirsty in the physical, I want more. But it also finishes with a, a, a promise. It says, for they shall be filled. Righteousness. Well, we can't be that. Wait a minute. Righteousness, we, we take and twist some things so much. Righteousness is just being in right standing with God. That's all. Don't overcomplicate it. We overcomplicate things. And if we're not careful, we lose that focus. We lose that passion. We lo lose that desire. Overconfident, we become content. We become com content in, our, in our, our, our relationship with God. All right, Tim, you're right. He told me this water was special water. It's flavored. That gives me an extra hour to go. I'm just saying. But we become, we do. We, we don't continue to pursue. And I, I hate to have the example to share. But it's so true in, in, in marriage. We become content with where we're at. We tie the knot, make the commitment, whatever, however you would like to address that. But then we become content. What happened? Because it's so, it so ties with Jesus. Jesus and, and our, our, our literal marriage. We become content. What happened to the hunger? Did we become comfortable? Did we become satisfied? Honestly, did we just become bored? Why did we, do we come begin, become content with Jesus? Do we just get satisfied? Does the new wear off? Did the maintenance take more effort than we wanted to give? Did it satisfy a need that you don't have anymore? Was the cost too great? Was the price too high? Did we just get lazy? Relaxed? Careless? Did we just move on to the next shiny thing? See, the more is not the issue. It's the values, it's the priorities we place on the more of our life. See, I run across this meme on Facebook. And granted, Facebook has as much negative, but I, I, I claim that if I can do anything to make a positive, I'm going to do it. But this just hit me, and I've got to share it. I changed a few things, but it's not mine originally. But it's so fitting when I'm, when I'm seeking what God, what you want me to share, and this fits so well with See, the problem can't be time because we take time to watch TV. The problem is in our energy. We want to go, sorry guys, golfing, fishing, hunting, but guess what? Shopping. We do these things. The problem isn't money because I dare say most of us have two cars probably a smartphone, and probably, literally, multiple TVs in our house. And I'm not, I'm not going against the TV. But I'm just saying it's things that we value. See, the problem really is our priorities and what we put above each other. Eve made her decision based on a desire to be like God. And in that, it kind of reminded me of a story that we know of even in the Old Testament. King Solomon. See, he kind of went the other way. He desired to have wisdom. He desired to have really the same things that, that Eve was wanting. She was wanting to be smarter and wiser and to be like, like a God. But Solomon, he wanted to be wise and 
have knowledge and understanding and be able to lead God's people the direction that God wanted him to lead. He wanted the same things, but for a different purpose. He had a different priority. And get this. He wanted them so bad that it was in his dream that God come to him. We know this because of, of in 1 Kings chapter 3. It says the Lord appeared to Solomon in a, in a dream by night. It's not that hard to figure out. That was what was on his heart so much. He wanted it so much to please God. It was his every heart's desire. So much so even in his sleep. He wanted it. And it was in his sleep he encountered it. And because, and because he hungered for that so much. And there again, it so parallels to what I shared about in the, the man in Acts, the lame man. It so parallels it because God grants his desire because he wanted to, to really to please God more. And it goes on and if I've got it. Yeah, verse 13. I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be anyone like you among the kings of your day. We desire more. But it's because of our lack. Solomon realized that he lacked something. He lacked the, the understanding, the wisdom, how to, how to rule and, and guide God's people of no less. God's people. Most kings would have, they're my people. That was Saul's problem. But it, he realized it was in his lack. And let's think about lack, our lack. We don't like lack. Our human nature says to lack is unacceptable. It's not being good enough. We relate it to, to negative. Coming up short, a sign of weakness. You look in the dictionary, and even the dictionary has that negative. The dictionary's definition of lack is the state of being without and not having enough. A certain tone of negativity. Just negative. We look at lack as a, as a minus, as a not a good thing. Because when you just base everything off the definition, we're doomed because of our lack. And then, then we think of it in that aspect, and then what do we do? We turn it to the material. We max out credit cards. We overextend our limits. Not only to have more, but to be impressive to others. <laughs> or it's our intellect. It's besides the material, then it becomes our intellect. We want people to think that we, we are more, we're smarter than what we, we claim to be. We try to make up for it in every other way. But something that we tend to forget and it's a spiritual warfare. Ephesians, Paul writes in, in chapter 6, verse 12, for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the principalities, against the powers, against the rulers of darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. So maybe I need to back up. Maybe I need to explain why our desire for more is because of our lack. We need to understand that our feelings of lack, remember what I said about spiritual? It's the spiritual desire. Our desire for more comes from, and, and because feeling of lack, we feel that we're lacking because we're really lacking. We're hungering more. And, and that more is God. It's that spiritual connection that, for that relationship that we have, that we've found. And there's something missing there. And that creates a lack. So 
It's to come into that deeper union, that deeper relationship with God, into that relationship that God created us for. I dare say our desire for more is a good thing because it's in that lack that we find that we have room for more. That sounds, I'm not trying to be Paul. I'm not trying to confuse us. But when we, we want more, but when we realize that we're, we're missing, there's something missing, stop trying to fill it with things. Stop trying to fill it. We try to fill it with, fill our lives with, with maybe it's cars, maybe it's friendships, maybe it's even control. We can try to want to control situations. It's not just, it's just not the, yeah, fine. If you know me, I'm pretty straightforward. It's not this, the sex, drugs, and rock and roll that we try to fill our lives with. It's not just the automotives. It's just not, it's just not things. There's substances. There's, there's being controlling. There's a lot of different ways that we try to make up for our lack. Because it's easier. It's easier to fill it with these things than to really spend time at these altars. We don't want to take the time. We don't. It hit me yesterday morning. I had an appointment yesterday morning. I'm driving down the road. And this just hit me out of the clear blue. I'm going down 20th Street. We all see the, they, they've made the overpass to go over the train. And, and if you know Joplin, they, over on Connecticut, they made the, road, the overpass for the train to go over the road. So you got the train going over the road. You got the road going over the train. Why? <laughs> we got these, we got these roundabouts. Why? I ask you why. Do you really know? Because we can't wait. We don't have time to wait. Microwave started it. You want a gourmet meal? You want to feast on God's word, but you want to take, want the shortcut to get there. So microwaves, roundabouts, and, and overpasses. But God spoke to me in that because we don't take the time to wait. We are, we got to get from point A to point B in a hurry. We come to church, we check it off, we did that, let's go. We don't wait. And then we wonder why God don't move. When years ago they spent time and they tarried around these altars. See, there's the word, there's the word, there's the word, there's carry, to wait. And you did it again, Lord. You got me so far off my notes, I'm not sure where I'm going. <laughs> and he does it all the time, and that's good. But we don't. We're in this hurry-up world to not take time. Because as I, I look back at this whole month, and... There's been a common thread all throughout of it. Adrian talked the first week about the crushing. The crushing for the holy, for the oil. But I dare say the crushing is for more of the Holy Spirit. Because we, there's some things that we claim that we don't walk in. We don't. We claim we want to be more full of the Holy Spirit, but we don't tarry. We don't spend time around the altars. See, it was really if we look at Scripture and it was that evening, that evening of that first what we call Easter, what I like to call Resurrection Sunday, it was that evening when Jesus goes into the, comes to them and you know that they tripped them out because the doors was closed and there's Jesus. So we know he, they tripped him out. But, and we're talking to these guys, I mean, they'd walk with Jesus for some three, three and a half years. 
they'd spent time with him. They'd heard him talk. They'd heard John the Baptist seen the dove descend upon Jesus. Peter, James, and John went up on the Mount of Mount, the Mount Transfiguration, and they seen, they heard, people they heard God proclaim, this is my son. Even Peter, I think it was in Matthew, said that you are the Christ. Even though about five or six short verses later, Jesus is looking at him and telling him to uh, get me behind me, Satan. But it's at that evening of that first resurrection Sunday that he goes into a group of men gathered together. And he looked at him and he spoke peace. He spoke peace. And then it says that he breathed on him the Holy Spirit. He really gave them, for the first time, he really gave them a taste of salvation. Before that, they just, they had a relationship. They followed him. Sounds like, sorry, sounds like some people in church. They followed him all right, but they didn't have that relationship. Granted, they couldn't. Not until he'd done what he did on the cross that really sealed it. It really sealed the fact that he had the glory. And then he gave that glory, gave him a taste. But it didn't end there. There was more. Now there's something we can get a grasp on when somebody tells us, but wait, we remember the commercial, but wait, there's more. Well, guess what, people? There's more for him. Of him to be had, but oh, you've got to, there again, we come into that, you've got to wait, go and tarry. If I could find it, I'd read it to you. They have to go, it says to go and tarry and wait for the promise, for the promise of more. For John, yeah, in Acts 1, 4, and 5, it says, And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You have heard from me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Not many days from now. See, Jesus walked around. And you've got to think about the irony of this because this is where we've got a lot to learn. We've got a lot to grow in because what would we have done if we'd been Jesus? And I think about this. You killed me. I come back to life. Guess what? I'm getting in your face. Didn't work. Didn't work. Here I am. That wasn't what Jesus did. He told him to meet him in Galilee. Why Galilee? Actually, if you read, read the scriptures, the angels told him to go back and tell the disciples to meet them in Galilee. The, then Jesus met Mary and told her to go back and tell him to go to Galilee. And really, if you look scriptures up in, earlier at the, at the Last Supper, Jesus had said that I'm going to go to Galilee after this is done. Why? But then he, it says, that, like I just said, he come to him on that evening and he, why? Because they was waiting. They didn't know what to do. They was lost. They didn't really have that, that Holy Spirit in them yet to guide them, to direct them, to take them to the next level. They heard these words and, and they were still wrapped up in thinking that there was something, that there was going to be a kingdom on earth and, and they, had to, they had to change their mind. They still was caught up, even though they'd spent three years with Jesus, they still had, had to change their mindset 
the mind hadn't been renewed. But then he's promised them power. Promising them authority, and they, it, it says they go on, they go out, they, they meet with Jesus because he had to draw them back. He drew them back to where they began. It was in the Galilee that he called a lot of them to come follow him because they got away from him. They got away from it all. They'd lost their perspective. This sounds crazy, but we lose our perspective. Even if we're in church, we lose our perspective. They'd lost their perspective. They followed Jesus and they lose their perspective. And then he gets ready to go back. And now they have to wait. Ah, huh, there it is. <laughs> but to go back, can you imagine? If you stuck these, I know what, what the scripture says, the 120. We can't even hardly get two or three, four or five, let alone 120 to agree. And guess what? They didn't necessarily think the same thing. And you know what? It was all right. Well, what's it mean for him to come back? What's it mean for him to, to what's it going to look like? Well, Adrian, it, it's gonna, he's going to do this. It's going to be this way. No, I don't think so. But they stayed together. They agreed to disagree because he promised another. They knew the promise. They didn't know what it looked like. We can, we can, we can talk about the same thing, and it, we're going to view it different ways. You know, interesting fact, I got the opportunity one time to go out to Fredericks, Maryland uh, on a safety deal, and I got in a conversation, and we both had the same job. We had the same position. He was in Fredericks. I was in, in Joplin. We had the same job. And we was talking about it. And I was looking at him, and he was looking at me like, you're nuts. What are you talking about? We finally put it together. We was talking about the exact same thing. Because it was perspective. It was that culture, our culture. But it was the exact same thing. So they come into unity. You want to talk unity? It's even in the Old Testament. You say, what? Look at Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They didn't hesitate. They did not hesitate when the king said, okay, look, boys, I love you to death, but you got to do this. Sorry, can't do it. It wasn't, hey, Josh, maybe we, better, we, maybe, maybe we need to think about no, it doesn't say they conferred. It just said that they said, no, we're not. It doesn't matter. It does not matter what you do to us. We are serving God. Let's go. Get in the furnace now. There was unity. Those boys had unity. Those boys had unity. And now we're being called back to unity again in the church. To go together, to wait, to wait, not knowing, not knowing. At least they knew they was facing a fire. They had no idea. Thank God there was a fire they was waiting on. The fire of the Holy Spirit, and we need to have that more often. John talked about it. He said there's, a, there's a one that's going to come that's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Where's the fire today? But there's unity. There's got to be unity. We've got to bring this thing together. And it's, does it mean waiting? Probably. Probably. Are we going to like it? I doubt it. we got the choice, though. God gives us the choice. He always gives us a choice. What's your choice going to be? The Holy Spirit, the more, the lack, the unity, it all comes together with the Holy Spirit. And even Jesus talked to, talked to God about it, that because that, God had glorified him. He'd given him the glory. And Jesus says that, I now give you the glory 
See, I dare say we're scared of some things. We're scared to claim some things, people, of what God's done for us and what he has for us and who we are in Christ. Yeah, we claim humility. We claim we're humble. We claim humility, and we devalue the cross and everything that Christ has done for us because we don't step into some things and don't think I'm, I'm standing up here and I've got it all worked out because I don't. But I know there's more. We're scratching, I, th I think we're scratching the surface. And he has so much more for us. But we don't, I mean, look at the revivals that we've had in the past. Look, at, I read a deal with uh, Smith Wigglesworth. And I pray for boldness to be able to share. But it said that Smith was on a, on a train ride going to, I'm sure, a revival, to hold a revival. But he was sitting in the cabin, and there was like six people that come in and sit in the same cabin with him. I guess he got up and, and went and probably went to the restroom. But he come back, and there was just that heaviness. Because we know Smith Wigglesworth. He spent time in prayer. He had a relationship, but the man didn't say a word, but because the spirit of God was so heavy on him, they felt a conviction. They felt the Holy Spirit, the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. Didn't have to say a word. Does Jesus resonate in, I'll take, I'll take it. Does Jesus resonate in me that much? I want him to. But there's a price we got to pay. There's time we have to spend seeking his face. You know, I, I listen for, I want to track with God. I don't want to get up here and just share a bunch of words. I want it to be God. And then I listened to Becky Wednesday night. And how there's got to be a hunger for more. We've got to be doing a work. We've got to be keep our guard up and, and still do a work. But we also have to come down here and spend time to push in, to press in, which is another thing. Why does Scripture say press? If it's easy, why would we have to press? If it's easy, why do we have to press? We need to understand, and it's all scriptural. I am, if you've accepted Jesus, I am a child of God. I am forgiven. I am a new creation in Christ. I am chosen. Maybe we get weird. Maybe we don't get weird enough. Maybe we're not really free. There's things that I want to do that I, and that's good things that I just, I'm reserved sometimes. And I, 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 I maybe hide behind the fact it's just not me. And to an extent, it's not. I've never really been that person that's just way out there at, a, at any kind of game. But maybe we need to be. Maybe we need to start stirring some stuff up. Maybe we need to be like David and dance before the Lord and get a little excited and pursue that avenue. And maybe so what? Maybe I thought I was so bound up at one, with religion that I thought, well, if God wants me to do it, I will do it. I'll just do it. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. It must not have been God. Because I had so tied up in my mind. I didn't understand. We start out. It's 
in faith, we step out. Maybe we don't understand it. Our head isn't meant to understand it. But we try to because it's human. We want to understand it. He just wants us to be willing. Pastor talks about running sometimes, and I've actually managed to do it a couple of times. Maybe we need to start stirring some stuff up because Paul wrote in Scripture to stir up. To stir it up. David stirred it up. <laughs> I caught, this is one of those times that I caught so much flack for what I'm about to say because I preached a message one time. And I'm not saying I wasn't a little bit in the flesh, but my heart was right. David stirred some stuff up. He worshiped like never before. He danced like never before. And Michelle, what do you think you're doing? What do you think? Who You are the king. You don't act like that. What happened to Michelle? Is that really where we want churches to go? Do we really want a church to become barren and not used of God? She become barren. I'm a saint. I am more than a conqueror. I'm a joint heir with Christ. Dare I say, I'm raised with Christ and I'm seated in heavenly places. People, these are all scriptures. <laughs> we don't claim them. We don't live them. Why? Because we don't want to wait? Because we don't have time to wait? Guess what? I'm not condemned. Guess what? I don't have to listen to what the devil's tried to say. I don't have to take his lies anymore. No. Draw a line in the sand. It's time we draw a line in the sand. I'm doing this. <laughs> He's coming back. He's coming back for a glorious church. I guess I got to read this first, don't I, Lord? Guys, it's scripture. It says, husbands, love your wives. See, I was that guy. I'll confess, I was that guy that used scripture that wives, you have to submit. You have to do what I want, what I say. I was that person. But if you really get into the scriptures, that's only one verse. And the rest of it is focused on the husbands, to love your wives. But hear this, that as Christ also loved the church, he gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her and wash her washing of the water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church. See, Scripture is, as much as the Scripture was for, for them to go and wait, and, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit resulted, as much as that was for them, it's still for us. Because he said, power and authority I give you. See, I know where this morning is supposed to end. I just don't know if people's willing to do it. And honestly, am I willing to do it? Am I willing to spend some time at these altars? But do we want a move of God? Do we want to come together in agreement?
He's calling us again today. Just like he called, told the disciples to meet him in Galilee, to go back, to go back to where it began. Where did it begin? But on your knees at an altar? The thing that I've shared as so much is, is we can sit, we can sit, we can make commitments, we can pray in our seats. And I'm not saying God won't hear us. But I'm saying there's something about making a walk. It's a testimony. It's the beginning of a testimony. It's taking, it, it's laying self aside. And I want more. Don't know what it's going to look like. Not sure what it's going to feel like. Pretty sure it's not going to feel good. But how can something that's God not be good? What level do you want? Are you satisfied? I mean, if you're satisfied, I can't make you. But there's more. But there's more. If anything, embrace your lack. Embrace the fact that I feel empty. I feel I need something. There's got to be something. There is. There's more of Him. Can't we come together today? Can't we be unified enough to spend time together in prayer? I know it's Sunday. I'm not dumb. But how else is it? When else? When? When? If not now. If not now, when? When? If we wait till things till the, for the perfect condition, it's never going to happen. We'll always find a reason. If not when, now when? They tarried. Yeah, sure. Maybe they wasn't built, bent down in prayer. Maybe they were sitting around a table. But they tarried. They waited. They sought Him, not knowing what it is. We kind of have an idea. Do we want more of His Spirit to move and stir our hearts? Or are we satisfied? You hold the key. fresh fire. See, there's one verse, and I, I'll share this. You know where you're at, but in John 16, verse 7, and I love the Amplified on this, it says, but I tell you the truth, it's to your advantage that Jesus goes away. For if I do not go away, the helper, this is where it gets good, the comforter, the advocate, the counselor, the strengthener. And if that's not good enough, it says the standby. The standby is, what is it that you need today? If I've missed anything in, in, count, in comforter, a, a advocate, intercessor, counselor, strengthener, if there's anything that isn't listed there, then it's covered in the standby. Helper will come to you. But if I go, I will send him, the Holy Spirit, to you. We claim we're tongue talkers. We're, we claim a lot of things. Isn't it time we step into it? What do you want? Do you want the more? Or are you satisfied? Let me tell you, satisfied. If we're satisfied with where we're at, we're not going to go anywhere else. Really, really, if you're not satisfied. Now, I, I, I don't mean to sound, but I'm, maybe I do. 
maybe I just don't care because I'm just got that free. If we're not moving forward, and if we're not pursuing the more of God, if we don't recognize what we're lacking and that it's really Him, and if we don't want to pursue these things, we're going backwards. There is no middle ground. You're either going forward or you're going backwards. There's no neutral. There's no e-break on this thing. I can hold my ground because holding your ground is not good enough. And we've tried to hold our ground too much. And I'm telling you, it's time. It's time to move forward. And maybe the moving forward means somebody has to set the example.
adding on to that. Let's all come up and let's just pray together. Come on, everyone just come up. Whoever wants to just come up and pray, let's come together as a church, as one body in Christ. Come on, don't be shy. Don't be shy, guys. We are the church. And this is where it begins. This is the example that unity is going to start. Right now, come together. Come on. Grab someone's hands. Right now, come together, come together, come together, come together. Right now. This right here is a sign that we are one. As Christ has called us to be one. One mind, one accord. To preach his gospel, to bring his gospel to the world. The most important thing, the most important mission that Jesus Christ told us is what? Go out into the world. That's it. Go out into the world. Make disciples. Teach them the ways of the Lord and keep in his commands. That is the one thing he has told us all to do. Can we agree now? I want everyone, do you agree with that? Do you agree with what Jesus said? Can we come in agreement in one mind right now? I pray boldness over us right now. Right now, I pray boldness. In the name of Jesus Christ, teens, I pray boldness right now. Come on. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will reach your, your friends. You're going to reach people all around you right now in the name of Jesus. Adults at your workplace, you're not just working. Your ministers where you're at. There's people. Come on. Come on, just everywhere we go, we're at Walmart, we're at work, we're at here. There's people that need Jesus Christ. But we have got to come in one mind and one accord. And we got to know that there is more. There's more. Come on, let's come together in one mind. Right now, oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, come on, just begin to pray. Pray for each other. Pray for this unity, desire, come on, more hunger, come on, but there's more, there's so much more than this, more than this four walls right here, there's a mission, there's nations that need Jesus Christ, that is the call, right now, he's the way maker, he's the way maker, he's the way maker. We may not see it, but he's working. Do not. Even when I don't feel it, you work it. 
never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see you to work.
but you're keeping it in the house of God. He said, I want you to go outside these walls and I want you to begin to bring people in. Begin to ask the Holy Spirit to lead you to a lost and dying world. If you don't press here, when the armor of God is not on, make sure to know that the devil will come in. He said, put on the whole armor of God that you're able to withstand that evil day. And it's coming. It's been here, I've went through it, it's coming. So he said, shake yourself. If you miss God, just repent and get back up. That's why they said David was a man after God's own heart because he was quick to repent. He didn't listen to the lies of the enemy. Well, I deserve this because I done this. No, I said, I repent God and I'm praying for crop failure. I don't want the seed to come up that I planted. I'm praying for crop failure and I'm asking the power and the Holy Spirit of God to begin to move. Oh, folks, begin to press, begin to press. I told one of the young girls, bind the spirit of don't want to. I don't know what it is, but I bind the spirit of don't want to and I can't. And I said, greater is he that's in me than any spirit of don't want to. I don't want to pray, I don't want to read. I want to wait on the Lord. I just want to sit in my chair and wait. But he will do us with power that we can do it. Within ourselves, we can do nothing. But when the supernatural steps in, see, the supernatural stepped in on Rick's life. That's a supernatural. A supernatural stepped in on many of your lives. I'm asking you to be quick to repent every day and ask the Lord to cause you to be the overcomer. Because greater is he that's in me. Greater is he that's in me than any opposition coming against me. Greater is he that's in me than any hatred coming against me. Greater is he that's in me than any lack coming against me. Greater is he that's in me than the death standing at my door. Oh, folks, the Lord is reaching out and compelling you to come. Come unto me, all you that are heavy laden. Come unto me. Oh, come. Young people, begin to press and come. This is not a recreational center. This is a house of God. This is a holies of holies. Begin to honor and reverence the things of God in the house of God. Don't talk and up and down and around. Be no, you grieve the Spirit of God. Be careful that he can bless you, anoint you, and change your life. Praise God. Amen. That was a good word this morning. I don't know about you, but, you know, I feel challenged in a good way right now. You know, challenge isn't a bad thing can't have growth if you don't feel challenged you know and as, as everyone actually it was pretty universal you know go after God you know it's not about it's not about what happens here it, that matters it's about what happens at home you know this is just a place we're supposed to come together and encourage each other and rejoice with each other you know but what happens at home that's where your real battle is fought and that's where your real battle is won is at home in your personal life every single day, every minute of every day. You know, pray without ceasing. You know, you can pray all day long without even speaking a word out of your mouth. You know, I speak to God all day long about all the things, all the things, <laughs> you know, and I encourage you to do that. Fellowship with him every day. Um, I just wanna remind you guys um, that next week will be baptism. If anyone wants to sign up, let me know and we'll have it ready. But you guys just, just leave here ready to impact your world on purpose. You know, pray God put somebody in my path today that I can impact. Even if you don't feel like, man, I, I, I could be better. or I could do this better. Guess what? God will still use you. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. If your heart's willing, God will use you. God will take care of the other junk. Just make yourself willing. That's what I send you out with today. We love you guys and enjoy your day, enjoy your week and come back ready for a rejoicing service next week.
guys, thank you so much for joining our live stream from Oasis Church today. We are so excited to have you. We love knowing that what we do here is reaching people all over our region, our country, and hopefully the entire world. We hope that the worship today helped prepare your heart to engage the Word of God and that the Word of God brought forth today ministered to your soul. You can check us out at findyouroasis.church where you can find all the info about our church, our upcoming events, the service times, and much, much more. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us on our website or on our Facebook page. Thank you, and we hope to see you next week. Thank you.